Laser Engraver 101. So this piece of equipment is from the Technology and Engineering Express, St. Cloud State's mobile lab program, similar to the Science Express. And we're going to go over the uh, basics of setting this up to engrave lettering on just about anything you come up with. In this case, we're going to use a cell phone case. Matt's got a, an OtterBox case here, okay? So what do we have? We've got a laptop here that has the uh, print drivers and a program called Corel Draw on it. You can turn the machine on, power button. If you need to log in because it's been powered off, the login is right here. It's TCOS, T-E-E-C-O-S-E, -E -E, and the password is STUDENT3 with a capital S. Okay, But normally when you turn this on, it's going to kind of be auto-logged in and CorelDRAW is open. Now CorelDRAW is like Photoshop. The only difference is it's a vector-based program, which means when you scale objects, it doesn't get really pixelated. It just it, it maintains its resolution. Kind of cool. Okay. So all you need to do is create a work window here. Um, this grid right here on the screen, zero, zero point, or our origin, is the same origin as the upper left hand corner inside here. So that's our zero, zero point right there. So we correspond that and say, well, if I want some lettering on this case, I'm going to slide the case in, and I'm going to look at, Matt, where, where would you want the lettering to be here? Um. Pretty much centered right across the back. Centered right across the back. So we're going to go centered on the two and a half inch line. Maybe we'd go three inches, huh? Or two and three quarter. Yeah, like right a little there. more toward the top, closer to the apple. So we'll go two and a half inches, okay, mm. on center. And then the center of the phone looks like it's at about an inch and a quarter. Dalton, can you get that? So we're lining this up here. The center of this is going to be an inch and a quarter and two and a half on our X axis. So we come back here. We're going to grab the text tool, and Matt, I need your kind of opinion on this. I'm going to click on this, go out here and drag a box. I'm going to start it down right at about the two and a quarter inch mark, and I'm going to drag it like this over. I can always reposition later. What we need to choose is font style. Um, engravers is pretty cool. Get <clears throat> a cool cursive type of font. Right, uh, let's take a look at Engravers MT. That's one of my defaults. I don't know, I like this one. You want Matty Ice. Oh, yeah. Hmm. I'm going to center this font. Click the drop down here and choose center. And then font size, I can bump this up. I've got 12 point right now. I can go uh, kind of as tall as I want as long as it'll fit into that space. I have to expand this window out. Looks like that's going to be a little big. That's cool if it drops underneath like that. Too. You like it. Okay. Uh, so our start and stop points here, where the cursor is right now, I'm lined up with just about, let me escape out of this. I'm going to go to the pointer tool. And you can see up top here, I'm where my M starts, I'm at a half inch. And where my E ends, I'm at three inches which means it's going to be too big because I only go to a um, two and a half over here. So I've got to shrink my font size down a little bit, go back into the font tool, highlight, should be able to go 24 font, we can probably go 30 font. And that comes out right at about two and a half. It looks like we can shift over this way a little bit. So the position tool here, I can use the arrow keys to shift it kind of finitely. And I remember I wanted to be centered on an inch and a quarter. So here's my inch and a quarter up here. And I'm going to get those T's lined up so they're right between that inch and a quarter. Might be a little, oh, it should be good that way, yeah. So that's looking pretty cool. My height wise, the top of my M is at two and a half. The bottom of my I right here is at about three and a quarter, which will work just fine. Okay, it's going to fit in there. So um, for the most part, I've got my text position. Are you okay with the font or do you want to look for something different? That looks cool enough. That yeah. looks cool enough. Okay. So I can just send this to a printer. That's how this works. File, print, and the printer that I want is VLS 360. It's the defaulted print there. Touch the screen. There we go. And I'm going to hit print. And it goes to this uh, printer down here. So I can click on this red icon here. It's in this short. See that it shows up.
my window here is kind of the same as my print window right here. I need to do some setup before I can actually run this, okay? First thing I need to do is turn this printer on. So I'm going to hit the power button right here. And this will wake up. Eventually I'll need to turn my BOFA filter on, but for now, sound-wise, we're going to leave that off. So this thing's kind of initializing and waking up. First things I can do to verify that it's in the right spot is I can use this little pointer tool right here. I'm going to click on that pointer tool. I'm going to come out onto my lettering and I'm going to go right to the top corner of the M, hit that, and this will shift over and show me an optic laser of where that M is going to show up. Okay, so that's my top left and my M. Jump over to my E. Verify that my E fits and it's centered. And of course, I'll go down to the bottom of the C as well. Right on. Okay, so it's in the right spot. Location's good. Um, what I need to do now is tell it what material I have, and I need to set the height so that the laser is focused. This little thing right here is very important for setting the height. It's the tool. You set it on your material surface. This little indent or bump out is where the bottom of the laser head needs to be. So I'm going to put this up alongside it, and Dalton, if you can jump in there. I need to change my z-axis, so I'm going to raise the table bed up until it hits that little notch. Right there, down a little bit. Right there. Okay, just settled in. So I'm good. Focus. I can take this out. My laser is now focused. This is just an optical laser. It's not the real deal. The real deal is infrared. You can't actually see it. You'll just see it burning. Okay. So my height is set. I can close my lid and I'll see that my optical laser goes away. Okay. There it is. Went away. All right. Last thing I need to do on here is change the settings so that I can tell it what material I have. I'm going to click on settings. I can choose my materials. I've got a plastic and I've got all these options and if I don't exactly know what I have, uh, you can ask me. Um, acrylic deep engraving, if you start out with acrylic, really all this does is if I click on this and then go to my manual control tab, I have to tell it that I'm going to engrave in black, don't ask me why. But these are the two major settings, power and speed. Notice that power is down to 20% and speed is 100%. That means it's going to do a pretty light engrave. If I go back to my material database and I go acrylic deep engraving and then go manual control, I can see that my power is at 100%, speed's down 80. Now if you get an engrave that's too deep and you cut through, that's bad usually. If you get it too light, you can always run it again without moving anything and it'll kind of do double the depth. Okay, so. We're taking a little bit of a guess here on the material. Any idea what it is? Yeah. Acetyl copolymer. It's just an otter box. Yeah, whatever, whatever <laughs> otter box is. Now, we could look this up, okay, and figure out what it is. If we go acrylic to start, it's going to do a very light engrave. So let's do that. We're going to click uh, manual control again. I always do this. Go here. Click set. Apply. OK. And our settings are correct for height, so we can go ahead and hit Run. And we'll see this take off and start cutting. The white that you see there is actually the laser burning material away. Now, it's a very light engraved. My guess is we're going to run it again, and we'll probably change the settings to be um, deeper or a, a harder cut. But if you're not sure, you'll get a sense for how much it cuts plastic or how fast. You can do one of two things. You can Increase the power of the laser, or you can decrease the speed. Those would both make it a more intense cut. So when it's done here, we're going to lift the lid, but we're not going to move it because if we move it, we're kind of we can never redo it, and we can't get it repositioned necessarily. I can see it, but it's like really smooth, really light, so they'll probably cut it again. Worst case scenario with the phone case, if you cut all the way through it, not a big deal because you'll get that reveal. Yeah. And you'll get your phone's reveal showing through. So, just about done. Oh, our BOFA filter, I could turn that on right here, especially when we're cutting plastic. Turn that on, and it's going to take all these fumes and suck them out of there, which is stuff you don't want to breathe. Burning plastic, not good. Okay, so we'll open that up. Dalton, see if you can see that. Pretty cool, it showed up. We can run it again. What do you think, Matt? 
Oh yeah, let's cut it again. Run it again, he wants some deep engraved, so. We'll go back to settings. Black. We're gonna increase our power up to about 75% and leave our speed the same. Set, apply, run. Now looking at this light is kind of dangerous. Oh, I gotta click OK here. Run. Especially when it's burning at like a higher higher power. You can see that it's fairly bright. So you don't want to stare at it, it's kind of like a weld light. Kind of cool though, if you, put, if you look right over the top, you can't actually ever see it because the laser's always in the way. Put the camera right over the top of the laser. It's like it disappears, but it's only happening so momentarily that you don't see it otherwise. Very cool. It's an awesome machine. This is how Apple does it when they engrave the back of your phone, the same kind of machine. Now that vapor stuff should wipe off of there. Uh, you should be able to clean it up with an acetone or something like that. But that's text. The only other part of this would be if you want graphics, you put the graphics in with your text, position those, and I'll show you how to remove all of the unwanted information on the graphics in the class. Do they have to have a graphic? Nope. You just, do, text you just do text uh, is the minimum, and that's kind of the easiest. So. And that you can take that out when it's done and show the camera, and then we'll call it good. It's a good dog. Yep. Now wait till the birthday night. What? You gonna call it good? Yeah, it looks great. Okay, pull that out. Should be able to wipe this clean. Oh yeah. There it is. That is laser engraver 101. That's pretty sweet. Same.